Classmates, hello everyone. Today we are studying Chapter Ten, Section One: Drafting of Contracts. One, the form of written contracts. Regarding the form of written contracts, there are no specific restrictions internationally, and they usually come in the forms of contracts, letter of confirmation, agreements, memorandum, and orders. One, contracts. The content of a contract is relatively comprehensive, detailing the rights and obligations of both parties, as well as how disputes should be handled. All these are specified with considerable detail. For bulk or high-value commodities, or transactions involving larger amounts, more complex terms, and longer performance times, this form of contract. Is advisable. Many foreign trade enterprises usually have a fixed contract format. Once a transaction is agreed upon, the salesperson can fill in the contract according to the agreed upon transaction terms. The language used in the contract is in the third person. Two, letter of confirmation. The letter of confirmation, also known as a short form contract. Is a simplified version of a contract. The legal effect of a letter of confirmation is the same as that of a contract, but there are slight differences in their formats and close items. The letter of confirmation is relatively simple and is mainly suitable for transactions involving small amounts, multiple batches of local specialty products, and minor industrial products, or transactions. Where long-term agency or exclusive sales agreements are already in place, the language used in the letter of confirmation is in the first person. Three, agreement. An agreement, also known as a protocol, is a type of international treaty. That is, a document signed after negotiations on a specific issue have reached a consensus. There are many types of the agreement. Such as cooperative development agreements, sales agency agreements, patent transfer agreements, and so on. Internationally, regarding agreements and contracts, there are different understandings and interpretations. If both parties of the transaction have reached a consensus on the specific terms, in essence, the contract has already been established. Even if the term agreement is used. It still has the nature of a contract, in the eyes of the law. Four, memorandum. A memorandum is a document used to remind or draw attention to a particular matter. In other words, a memorandum records the issues discussed and agreements reached by the negotiating parties, merely indicating a certain level of understanding on certain matters. Which is then recorded in the form of a memorandum, as a basis for future transactions or cooperation, or as a preliminary agreement for further negotiations in the future. It generally does not have binding legal force. Five, order, an order also known as purchase order. A purchase order is a document drafted by the importer or the actual buyer to order goods. An order that has been negotiated and agreed upon is essentially equivalent to a purchase contract or a purchase confirmation. But format and content are simpler, sometimes listing only the main transaction terms. Two, contents of the contract. One, head. The head is the beginning part of the contract, including the name of the contract, its number. The date and the location of its drafting, the names and addresses of the contracting parties, their legal relationship, and the preamble. One, name of the contract. The name of the contract, which indicates its form, is typically located in the center of the first line of the contract. Two, numbering. Many foreign trade companies have established internal rules for numbering contracts. For example, first letter of the company name plus year four digits plus 
first two letters of the business type plus number four digits. When a salesperson drafts a contract, they should number it according to the company's rules, or apply for a number from the relevant personnel in charge of contract management. The contract number is typically located in the upper right corner of the contract. Three, date of contract execution. The date when the contract is signed is very important for the following reasons. Firstly, the date of contract execution is usually the date when the contract becomes effective, and it is a crucial factor in determining the starting time of the responsibilities of both parties. Secondly, the date of contract execution directly affects the applicable law when resolving contract disputes. In the current era of rapid social development and frequent enactment, and revision of laws and regulations, this is of crucial importance. When the buyer and the seller sign the contract in person, the date of contract execution is usually located in the upper right corner of the contract. If the buyer and seller are in different locations, and the contract is signed sequentially by mail, the date of contract execution is typically located. At the end of the contract, where the signatures of both parties are affixed, and is filled in separately by each representative when signing. Four, place of contract execution. The place of contract execution, or the place where the contract is formed, refers to the location where the contract drafting process is completed. The place where the contract is formed relates to. The jurisdiction of the case, which is very crucial in the contract. Five, parties to the contract, the names and addresses of the contracting parties and their legal relationship. In international goods sales contracts, the initial section must clearly state the legal relationship between the signing parties, namely the seller and the buyer, and separately specify the full corporate names. Addresses and the contact details of both the buying and selling parties. The full corporate name should match the company's seal or signature, company address. The address should be detailed, and typically includes city, district, street, road, house number, office building, floor, room number, telephone, and fax numbers should be specified with. The international dialing code and local area code. Six, preface, preface, which outlines the purpose, reasons, and guarantees for the execution of the contract, serves as an introduction to the contract. Although not explicitly required by law, the preface can provide effective interpretation of the contract and assist. In understanding are the clauses within the contract. Two body, the body is the main part of the contract. It contains the various transaction conditions that both parties have agreed upon through negotiation, including clauses on the subject matter of the contract, delivery terms, pricing and payment terms, and provisions for the prevention and handling of disputes. This section reflects. The main rights and obligations of both parties, specifically the clauses on the subject matter of the contract, include descriptions of the goods, name and quality of the product, packaging, and quantity, weight. The delivery terms cover transportation of the goods, and insurance for the goods in transit. The pricing and payment terms include the unit price. Commissions and discounts, the provisions for the prevention and handling of disputes, include commercial inspection, claims, arbitration, and force majeure. Tail, the tail is the concluding part of the contract. It includes the applicable law, the validity of the text, the number of copies of the contract, and the effective time with signatures from both parties.
One, legal applicability. In international goods, sales contracts, the parties often belong to two or more countries or regions, and the laws of the countries or regions to which the contract parties belong, as well as the laws of the countries or regions involved in the contract, often differ. Therefore, it's necessary to declare in the contract whether the laws of our country or the laws of another country apply, and which international treaty, international practice is applicable. Two, validity of the text. In practical business operations, the majority of Chinese foreign trade enterprises use contracts that are bilingual, typically in both Chinese and English, and stipulate that both versions carry equal validity. However, to prevent disputes arising from differing interpretations of the wording in the two languages. It is common practice to include a clause in the contract specifying which language version shall serve as the definitive interpretation, number of contract copies, and effective date. The number of original copies of a contract is primarily determined by the number of parties involved, ensuring that each party receives at least one copy. In international goods, sales contracts, which typically involve two parties. The buyer and the seller. There are usually at least two original copies, one for each party. When contract approval is required, or additional copies are needed for internal contract management purposes, multiple original copies must be prepared. Four, the parties to an international goods sales contract, which are typically signed by both parties, usually consist of. Legal entities or other organizations recognized by law. Both parties can choose to have their legal representatives or authorized representatives sign the contract. To make it effective, they can also choose both parties to seal the contract to establish it, or they can choose both parties to have their legal representatives or authorized representatives sign. And affix the corporate seal of the legal entity, or a special contract seal, to establish the contract. Three issues to consider when drafting contracts: one, striving for the right to draft the contract after both parties in the negotiation have reached a consensus on the main terms of the transaction. It is customary to agree on which party will draft the contract. Before proceeding to the contract signing stage, generally the party who drafts the text holds the initiative. Therefore, it is important to pay attention to the drafting of the contract text and strive to secure the right to draft it. Adopt standard formats for foreign trade companies engaged in import and export activities for an extended period. It is advisable to consult professional lawyers, according to the company's business characteristics and product features. Drafting standard contract terms and formats applicable to company operations, adopting contracts with company standardized terms and formats, ensures that important matters are not overlooked due to momentary oversights. And it also saves a significant amount of time. That would otherwise be spent on repeated negotiations. Each time a contract is drafted, it is only necessary to fill in new content within the blank standard contract template. Employ professional and accurate terminology. The language of a contract should employ commonly used professional terms accurately expressed and structured. To avoid misunderstandings, this approach helps reduce disputes arising from differing interpretations of the contract. Contract wording must be precise and rigorous, avoiding ambiguity or vagueness. Pay attention to the intrinsic connections between contract clauses. 
a contract is a coercive entity, where each clause should harmonize and connect with one another without any contradictory content. For instance, the currency denomination for the unit price and the total price must be consistent. The trade terms should align with the port of shipment or destination, and the trade terms should be in agreement with the insurance provisions.